Welcome back. Youth at Khampatlele near Bulukwan in Limpopo this morning looted shops belonging to foreign nationals. Swift action by the police led to the arrest of several suspects and the recovery of stolen items. For more on that, we're now joined from our Bulukwane studio by our reporter, Khaukhelo Makhulejo. Khaukhelo, thank you so much for joining us. Now, was there any signs of tension before the looting spree this morning? Apparently, there has been a series of community meetings with the biggest one held over the past weekend whereby it was decided uh, that the foreigners should leave the place. But equally, we have also noticed that most of the residents were not part of that meeting and were not aware of that decision that purport, purport, uh, represent the views of the community. So the anger has been brewing, but it's not shared across the community. Now, Khaukhela, what? where does the anger come from? What, is the, what are the residents really angry about and why they're resorting to looting? Well, residents, both uh, old and young, are quite cagey about this thing. They're, they're quite reluctant to speak to the media. Most of them indicating that they fear being arrested, <coughs> being held responsible for the whole thing. But basically the stories have been very divergent. There are people who are talking about witchcraft, that uh, the foreign nationals sell stuff such as heart attacks and lightning at a very cheap price, and as a result people are dying in the community. But there is no uh, evidence of that, and we try to even uh, talk to some of the shopkeepers there, and the few that we could get hold of uh, denied selling stuff like lightnings and so on. Now, with regards to the police reaction to the looting this morning, um, their reaction seemingly was quite swift. The arrest that happened, do you know how many people were arrested and uh, what the process will be um, hereafter? And have you managed to speak to any of the, the foreign nationals who own these shops that were looted? Yes, the one that we, we, we spoke to, a Chinese national, told us that when he saw the youth barricading no roads at about 4.30 in this morning, he had assumed that maybe there was a service delivery protest of sort. He's uh, very bizarrely calm for somebody that has just experienced something like this. He had assumed that it's a, an ordinary service delivery protest, only to be woken up by noise at 6.30 when his shop was stormed. But to just take it further, I should indicate that there's also issues of uh, Perhaps uh, the general poverty that any South African may experience if you see a foreigner running a shop successfully in your area, especially from the youth, they do have uh, such undertones to say that uh, these people come to their land and uh, marry their sisters and make money there. So there is that kind of a feeling as well. Now, Raochelo, with regards to the community leaders, um, you mentioned the fact that there was a meeting and the anger has been brewing for some time. What are the community leaders saying, especially after the meeting, that not a lot of residents managed to attend the meeting? What is the outcome of that meeting? And, uh, you know, just to take it further, their reaction to that meeting, when exactly did the meeting take place? Well, most of the residents indicated that the only person that could really speak on behalf of the community was the councillor, and that the said councillor was not around and actually had not been around for some time. Hence, I'm indicating that most of the, uh, some of the people say they were not aware of those meetings. They never took part in those meetings. They were equally shocked to see the shops being uh, being attacked. So it, it's a it can be anybody's guess whether guess whether. This is a real community decision or whether this is anger because it appears that the action has been uh, leaderless. Others even uh, went on to tell us that it, it, the, the whole thing started gaining momentum around 6.30 when learners were, going to, were about to go to school and there's a, a meeting point where learners from different schools would gather before catching their various transport uh, to catching transport to various schools, that uh, it was from that point that the anger started showing. So it could be that uh, uh, indeed it was leaderless and it was uh, an issue of excitement taken too far. Now, uh, 
what is the mood like currently as we speak? I'm sure before you came through to the studios, you had a drive around to see what our residents, is it back to normal? Are the foreign shops still open? What is the situation like currently? Well, from the onset, police have been treating this as pure criminality. As a result, there's a strong police presence trying to look out for pos possible targets, shops that they think uh, can be. And meanwhile, on the other hand, the police were also trying to help others who were targeted uh, from Sunday onwards to resettle. I understand that uh, some Ethiopian nationals who were running a shop at the nearby village yeah. were attacked on Sunday and today they, they managed to return to their shops and started trading again with the help of the police. So the whole thing now is about the restoring law and order. Thank you so much, Gaukhelo, for joining us. That was our reporter, Gaukhelo Makhulejo, speaking to us from our Pulukwane studios.